I think seminaries are doing well right now onto requiring internships because that's going to force students while they're receiving an education to be in the field. Not every seminary does this, and I'm not saying it even has to be a requirement because I think that um, a Christian should know that what they're doing should probably be out in the field somewhere. I know that for many Baptists, they try to encourage you to actually partake in a ministry. I'm not going to go so far to make that kind of encouragement because I think that really is up to the discernment of the individual. Some people cannot do education and ministry at the same time and do not hinder any type of flock if you can't do both. That's just, that's just my, my thoughts. But that doesn't mean that you can't participate on a voluntary level. You know, so you can ask the local pastor uh, while you're attending seminary, hey, man, is there any way I can help? Look for ministries in the area. Um, here at the New Orleans area, we have Global Maritime Ministries, who, where I'm actually a chaplain of. I was a volunteer there for a year, and you can actually interact with international seafarers. And that's missions right at your front door. You know, there's missions coming to you. Um, there are other local ministries in the New Orleans area where um, you have homeless people. For uh, one semester, I took it upon myself to actually go to New Orleans East, which if you're familiar with the area, I know that you're not, but <laughs> uh, if you are familiar with the area, it is, it, is a, um, it is a poverty area, and there's a lot of Vietnamese immigrants there. And I actually spent time going to a coffee shop and having amazing Vietnamese coffee, helping a woman learn English as she helped me learn Vietnamese so I could do ministry with her. Unfortunately, I didn't see any fruit come from that ministry, but you know, it doesn't have to be a lot. You know, I did that twice a week and it was on a Tuesday and a Thursday because that was the days that I went to, to drive to uh, college and the, my seminary and it was 20 minutes down the road. So I'm not saying become a pastor, become a minister, but what I'm saying is um, do not be afraid of trying to figure out a way to apply what you learn theologically into the ministry setting, even if it's on a voluntary status, because if you just spend you know, five years getting a seminary education and then you start applying it after your seminary education, um, I, I have talked to guys and they're very much like, oh my gosh, it's, it's like two different worlds. Um, and you know, don't, don't do that to yourself. You know, please go, I'm, I'm begging with you, please go to the local church, find something to volunteer. It could be once a week, it could be once a month, you know, but that way at least you're getting something where you're integrating the education into the ministry and you can start getting that training now. So that way when you're done with the education and you actually go to the ministry that God's called you to go to, and that might be pastoral, you're not having to freak out. Oh, how am I supposed to explain the difference between, uh, dispensationalism and amillennialism, you can just tell them in a broken down format um, because you've had that experience before in the past. Yeah, that, that's really good advice, Adam. And I, I have to say, I, I had that similar, so my seminary required an internship and I was that guy at first who was kind of upset where I was thinking, oh, I came to seminary to do the, the school stuff. Why are they sending me into an internship? But now I can say that that's exactly what happened where I was forced to put into practice what I was learning about. And uh, my pastor at my church where I did my internships was super, super helpful and super encouraging where he would walk me through that stuff. And he would totally take into account that I'm in seminary and tried to give me feedback and assignments that related, but also filled in some gaps with my seminary education. And I think it was that for me anyway, that immediate putting into practice, I just learned about for example, the Trinity and seminary. And here I am at my church and youth group now walking them through the Trinity and seeing how one informs the other, but also how the seminary class, there is a bit of a gap between explaining 13 year olds, the nuances of the Trinity. I, I won't go into that, but uh, it was a, a good time. And the other point that you made, uh, just finding a, min like what, what you said, finding a ministry, having that on a, a voluntary basis, I think is important where some of the guys at my seminary, they totally were aware that taking on a lot of stuff during the year while they're full-time in school, not a good idea. And as you said, I think that's worth saying again, you don't want to be a hindrance or you don't want to be doing a terrible job in ministry because you can't take it on at that time. And I think that's where a lot of guys have to have the discipline to maybe say, maybe that's something I pursue in the summertime, or maybe that's something I do that, that once a month. And I think that's understanding who we are. That's been a theme throughout this conversation. I think a big part of going to seminary, thinking about seminary is having a, a proper understanding of yourself, 
what you're good at, where you need to grow and what you're able to take on. And that definitely applies to ministry and church life while you're in seminaries. Hey guys, if you like that clip, you'll probably like the entire video. Go check out the interview on Christian's channel, Christian's Colloquy.